Hey everyone, it is Char from Char's Fascination. Today I promised you Native American tacos and I am bringing that to you. Now Rez Cat over here, he's trying to get into everything. You stay, nope, you st oh. Spoiler alert. Come on, come on. I have a piece into everything. <laughs> So, we'll leave Rose Cat where he is. That's his name today. It's actually Titten. But, <laughs> so he will be trying his best to be in the way. But, it's funny. Titten, damn boy. Um, <laughs> don't mind him. But, anyway, so what we're using today for our ingredients, since I couldn't find the bluebird flower. <laughs> My camera person's laughing. This is hilarious. So today, actually, I do have a camera person. Everybody say hello. So, um, basically in here, there is three cups of flour. Yes, we can laugh. It's okay. Um, and uh, I do like this flour because I don't get And when you get an unbleached all-purpose flour, that's actually better for you. So we're just going to dump this whole bag in here because I've already measured one of these before. And it came out to three to four cups, which today that's what we need. And um, why? Because, well, making Native American tacos, everybody makes theirs different. Um, and, you know, I just, I can't get the flour everybody else has because it's just not available here. But you know what? I'm not mad at that. I'm using the Arm & Hammer baking soda. You know everything I got is not a sponsor. But who cares, right? So we're just going to pop that open. And we're taking three tablespoons. It's one. Two. Three. Now, that was our dry ingredients. A lot of other people add salt to theirs. I don't like to insult my food kind of funny but I do not like to insult my food don't worry I already washed my hands um now what you want to do is make sure that you have that mixed in there rather well um and then this is what I do is I make like a little pocket like right in the middle I remember this watching a few people when I was growing up. The uh, Umatilla, this is what they would do. Make that there and then, you know, you can put your spoon aside at this point. Because you're pouring the water in there. Where I live, you can't drink the water. Nope. Um, which is pretty sad that you can't drink the water. <laughs> it would save a lot of people some money. And not with Geico. But, anyway. I'm teasing this. Now, the consistency that you want to have this dough be. And it's not adobe. Um, <laughs> which is actually tried. A lot of people forget about the adobe tribes and that's really sad tribes have been forgotten about for years other than like if unless you want to go to the powwow you want to buy from a merchant um but with the 304 native american reservations and i've mentioned this a lot of times that um they share the res with other tribe members, you know, uh, well, uh, members of other tribes on the uh, same reservation. And a lot of times people think, oh, well, that land belongs to the tribes. 
Well, this is not true. Um, the land is owned by the U.S. government. And um, so are those casinos that people mistake of being owned by the tribes. It's not actually owned by the tribes. It's owned by the U.S. government. See, so, yeah, how I said I would teach you guys some history while I was at it. So that's some historical factage for you. Now, we're going to knead this dough. And if I need the other water while I'm kneading, I'm not that needy. <laughs> but I am going to knead this to the point. I don't care if that gets on me right now. Um to the point where this is a nice smooth dough. Now right over here in the pan behind me, I will start heating that oil. I got some extra virgin olive oil. I don't use canola oil. I don't use corn oil. I use extra virgin olive oil. Um, it gives it a better flavor. It's not greasy. But, um, we will be right back as soon as I'm done kneading this stuff. Okay, now that we're back, and I'm waiting for that to stop making noise. I was testing the oil for heating, and now I've made a bowl or dough ball out of that. And then what we do, we press it down. Now, I'm not going to, uh, I'm just going to do this my way. I'm going to flatten it out in my hand. Now, a lot of people, they will take theirs and use a rolling pin. You could use a tortilla press for this, quite frankly, because making a fry bread and a tortilla really isn't that much different. And uh, what you do, <laughs> that's really hot, is make a hole in the middle because you want to make sure that the air escapes and everything flows, okay? And then what we're going to do, we're going to calm this down by just putting that in there, okay? And then, as you look over here, and you see, I right today I'm going to do one at a time. I kind of step back. I don't want to be caught by oil. I got my scars from cooking, but hey stuff happens right <laughs> and then you let this cook until it's tan on one side and then tan on the other now one trick that i do to make this go a bit quicker is while that one's in there cooking i start pressing down the next one and hang it over the side until i need to put it in there and then when i do actually put that in there now, some of these will be big, some of these will be small. Now, a Native American taco basically is an open-faced taco. It's not one that you fold over, although you could. Although you could, it's an open-faced taco. And like I said, what you will do is you will pop a hole in the middle. I said I was going to wait to do that, but I might as well show you again. Um... I suppose if you do have a big enough pan, you can put more than one in there to make it all go quicker. But, we're waiting for this one. Ooh, it looks like it's getting nice and toasty on that side. Check this out. Yes. Look at that. I'll show you. Look at that. Nice and toasty. I'm going to let that one finish cooking, and then I will plate it to have the plate right here. So I'll bring that plate right over here, and then when this one's finished, then I put in the next and repeat that. So I will show you this one when I go to pull it and put it on the plate, and then I'll put this one in, we'll pause as soon as I pull this one. So, that way you just get 
the idea. That one's not ready yet. So you get the idea of how this is made. They're nice and fluffy. They're airy. Um, and the other ingredients that go on this, and since this is homemade, it's not out of the store, it's a lot healthier for you that way. And the other ingredients that I'll be using, I will tell you when I go to use them for the topping of this. So let's check this one more time. I believe it's ready to pull. Oh yeah, look at that. And look, it's a heart. It's so lovable. <laughs> so lovable. So we'll put that over here. We'll pause. And then I will get these done. And we will be right back. Okay, now that we're back. And as you can see over here. We have all the fry bread cooked. And the meat that I'm using today is ground bison. Yes, ground bison, something Native Americans eat and have ate for centuries, is uh, tatanka. It's a uh, yellow, which means it's good. And um, yeah, so you're getting some more education. You're getting education in verbs. <laughs> And so what we're going to do is, we all know ground bison comes in these square packs nowadays. Um, I used to buy the bison burgers at Trader Joe's. Because you would get like three of them in a packet for ten bucks. I don't think that's too bad, but you buy one bison burger at the store, you're paying ten bucks for one. <laughs> So, I'm going to let this cook, but before anything, I will show you when I go to cook this down all the way, let me turn up the temperature on that too, um, I will add in the better than bouillon, vegetable bouillon into this because it has a great flavor to it and it doesn't have all that sodium as you notice you haven't seen me use salt because I have heart issues my camera person heart issues I just don't like cooking with salt um, I'm just not a salty person I love this stuff I've been using this for a while now and I find that I don't just use the vegetable stock. I've also been using the beef stock, which they finally, going to make you laugh, have back in stock at the store. They didn't really have anything except for like a few jars of vegetable bouillon. And that was about it. And I was like telling the store management, and I'm like, you know, instead of holding your inventory in the back, you need to start bringing that out because I really know what's going on here. And it's not fair to the people. So, you know, limited to one item of everything. They finally put hand sanitizer back on the shelf. Do you have hand sanitizer? Hand sanitizer. I'm not editing this on your store shelves because I found that it actually wasn't gone from all stores. We were able to find it at the Dollar General. I shopped there. They're actually pretty decent people. Um, oh yeah, you guys noticed earlier I didn't have a belt on. I borrowed a belt from my camera guy. Thank you. <laughs> And, um, I haven't had a camera person in such a long time, and I'm actually glad to have one today because doing all this, I'm going to stop and start, stop and start, and then you really don't get, like, the full-on addition of what I'm doing. So, 
I'm going to put in, now this I do at the back of the spoon. I'm going to teach you this. Take this on the back of your spoon and drop it in. And why? Even though some got, you know, caught up in there, I have to wash a spoon or I can just grab a spoon to throw away. Now, we in this household now, we don't use paper plates. We don't use a lot of plastic utensils or anything that goes into the landfill, basically. Um, which is actually kind of good if you think about it. But, oh my gosh, that smells so good. I mean, it smells good anyway. I don't know, my camera guy. Does it smell good to you? He gave me a thumbs up. There you go. I think he's looking forward to this because he's also a taste tester. And he'll give me a, his uh, answer on his plate. <laughs> later on uh, but yeah I'm gonna let this cook until it's all, all done and then I will put the three cans of refried beans in with this cook that up and if you really look this is that vegetable stock that's in there cook it up really nice and um so yeah, as soon as this is done cooking up the meat portion, we'll be right back to put the refried beans in.